the definition of, of want to. When we say those cliches, <laughs> like they wanted it more and you don't know what they talk about. It don't really mean nothing. You want them to give you some some hardcore analysis. That's it. That's it. <laughs> you in a fight with somebody who ain't had no, had no indoor plumbing. They want everything more than you. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to The Right Time. My name is Bomani Jones. Thanks for listening wherever you get your podcast. Thanks for watching us on YouTube. Rate us, review us, give us five stars. You only give us four stars. I'm inclined to believe you are a hater. It is Foxworth Friday. Dominique Foxworth, what's going on? Not much, man. Just trying to keep everything in line. Everything's straight, man. It's a lot, a lot of thoughts in my head, a lot of opinions. You know how it is. Oh, yeah. So we got a lot to get to. We got, obviously, lots of Super Bowl stuff uh, and another fun story from the world that we'll get to. But, Dominique, I think you in a trick bag, kind of like I'm in a trick bag at this time, except for you, the trick bag's even more, as you are, like, you, 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 you missed a podcast, right? <laughs> like, you all over the place. By the way, shout out to you for being on the Daily Show on Wednesday night. Everybody go check it out. D.L. Hughley and Dominique Fosworth. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. But yeah, I know what trick bag you're talking about because it's like I only got so many uh, opinions, people. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) On on so many topics. And we got to talk about them all, all over the place, all the time. Yeah, like I be trying trying to give y'all a little something different in all these places, you know what I mean? But sometimes it's rough. Like I was always Smith. You know, Michael Smith uh, on Wednesday. And, you know, Michael Smith is black. And so I wanted to talk to him about the black quarterbacks. But I'm like, damn, I talked about that on Monday and I got Dominique coming on Friday. We just only going to be able to nibble at this one. You know what I'm saying? Like the homie game, that would be his thing. He's like, yo, man, we talked about this three straight shows. I'm like, yeah, dog, but this is what's cracking. And I only got but so many things to say about this. He was right. But I was right. Like we 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 all wind up yeah. right on that. I, one. I feel like um one thing that's happened that I I just gotta fess up to is I feel like I start to like take your opinions and forget that I heard them from you and just <laughs> say them somewhere else. Like I noticed myself. Like I know I used to like when I hear somebody say something that I thought was like worth repeating, like I always shout them out, but I feel like a couple times recently I was talking, I was like, man, did I think of that? Or did Bomani say that? Because like, I, I got a roller deck some thoughts and I was like, I know I can't say this one. Cause I said that one yesterday with me. I can't say this one. Cause I'm going to say this one on Thursday with Bomani. I got debatable with Pablo later. So I'm going to save that for there. And then blurt some out like, Oh, did I think of that? Or did I just hear Bomani say that a Yo, couple of days ago? <laughs> people don't get it, man. This is, this is where we are. Like we be true. I just want y'all to know, man, we be trying to cook this up. <laughs> All kinds of different ways for y'all. We really do. And people got the nerve to be coming back. Like, uh, it's a weird story. I saw something, but somebody made the point about a certain measure of repetition in voicemail topics. And I don't blame you for saying that, right? Like, I totally understand. Part of why this measure of repetition is, like, not everybody can make the top three. So, you know, other people might be coming in. I get it. You know what I'm saying? The other part of it is, been doing this for y'all for five years. I'm running out of random things for you guys to tell stories about. And I want to continue to have your involvement on the show where we can hear your yeah. voices. I really, really do. However, we got to go to the to what I call the McDonald's situation. You go to McDonald's, McDonald's got all that stuff on the menu, man. All those different things. And every time y'all find something new that y'all are kind of into, they going to do that. Every now and then they want to get fancy. Shout out to you, Arch Deluxe. Right. Like they, they they do all those things. But in the end, let me tell you what they selling. Big Macs, yep. water powders yep. and chicken bag nuggets. Oh, oh, oh. And filet of fish for you health yeah. conscious people. That's what <laughs> I'm they push it. I'm not a fan of people who come in with complaints and no solutions. If you <laughs> if you got an idea, serve it up. Like if you if you're tired of hearing the same uh voicemail questions, then serve it up. But I I at the beginning of the week. I make a, like a nice big full bird by by Wednesday. We make a little chicken salad <laughs> by by Friday. Y'all having chicken soup. We go we go cook that carcass. I'm gonna get every morsel <laughs> off the bone for you people. And then you got the nerve to be like, but where's dessert? Like, yeah, I, I'm I'm doing all I can, people. I'm doing all I can. 
Now, I will say this, like with the podcast games, a little different. You're right, because there's a bit more of an overlap of the audience. Yeah. But with them TV shows, I feel like if you was watching Get Up <laughs> and First Take and Around the Horn, and you going to come complain uh, to me that I said yeah. the same thing in all three places, I know how this is going to sound to y'all, but I'm going to say it, okay? If you complaining that you saw me on three TV shows saying the same thing, I'm complaining that you don't have a job. I am complaining that my taxes are subsidizing your <laughs> life. Oh, yeah. It's getting real Republican in this month <laughs> right now. And I'm going to do it. That's right. You'll be like, man, I watched you on 10 shows this week. You said the same thing 10 times. Why aren't you at work? <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, I'm with you. I fully agree. But I'll take it to a, another level. We talk about the same topic across the two hours of Get Up. If I say the exact same thing that I said in the first hour, in the second hour, you better not complain because of that complaint. If you're complaining and you're not a barber, like, you know, <laughs> y'all the only ones like you're not a receptionist and, and like uh, uh, in a male office, a doctor's right. office for, for men. I don't know what well, I guess it don't have to be for men, but that's why I find like you generally you find it. Yeah. But if you I don't know if you don't work at the airport. Uh, somewhere where this is just on all the time, then I don't want to hear you complain because you don't need to be sitting rapt attention to get up for two hours. Like if it's on in the background, cool. Maybe I, there's a little nuance of my opinion that you catch the second go around because I try to put a new spin on it. Like I'll, I'll change the metaphor second time around, but I'm basically saying the same thing. You ask me where Aaron Rodgers should go. The first time I'm going to say, hey, stay where he at. And the second time I'm going to say quickly, Stay where he at. But if he were to go somewhere else, like, I'll put a little spin on it. Right. The, the core of it has not changed, though. Yeah, let me tell you this, too. You got to be careful changing your answer uh, on those shows, and you be all with the same people. You mess around. You mess yeah. up their rhythm. That's how, that's, how you, that's how you wind up bumping heads. Yeah. They, they, was like, yeah. they was ready to spin, to take that assist off of what you said, but then you said something different, and they ain't even listening. Yeah, yeah, they treat it like spades. They like, yo, if you had that king, why did you play that jack? I try to mix it up because y'all can react to that. It's a little bit more. No, it, it's fun, though. You know, you don't – Um, I think the teammates matter so much more, too. It's a, a thing that you don't appreciate, I don't think, until – you work with some teammates that that aren't all that helpful. Like yes. sometimes you need somebody else to run the offense. That's one of the things that I've liked about working with Chris Canty. And people think that like, because you argue with somebody on TV, that means you don't like them. No, I love when Chris Canty say some off the wall sh that I know don't make no <laughs> sense. Like I absolutely love it. I dab his big ass up in the middle of commercial. Like, yeah, that gave me some energy. It gave yeah. me something to talk about. Let me tell you something. I'm Team Canty, and he told me this once at a party. I don't think I'm speaking out of school saying this, but it, like, really struck me and, like, has, has stayed with me for a while. Um, it was at my buddy Nick, uh, Nick Wright, at his uh, Halloween party one year, and Chris shows up. He is Joffy Joe Fur, and you know you rich, man, when you dress up like Joffy Joe Fur and your tan camel hair coat is just as fly as Joffy Joe Furs was, right? Like, these these are the things that come up. I'm like, you ain't even have to go buy this, bro. You had this in the closet because you always got this in the closet. But he was talking about doing this job. And I mean, you've heard me talk about this before, that, like, I have a particular respect for former athletes who get in this and treat this job with care, like, in the same way that they would treat their other jobs. But Chris was like, hey, man, I play football. You know, he's got Super Bowl ring. And he was like, but I not, I didn't get a gold jacket. He's like, I'm not, I wasn't great at that he's like but this i have a chance to be great at something else and i was like damn that really made me like look back at how i do my job and be like yo i need to be looking at this in a very similar way because i'm like yo man i just be out here balling you know what i'm saying yeah and he's i mean i i i respect him too like he's good at it and he works at it and he's one who doesn't rely on one move. Like to use the basketball analogy, he had new stuff to his game. And like, I, I make fun of him because I call him numbers. Cause every week he is that boy done his research. And like one of the things that I, I kind of learned a while ago and Chris, not to say that Chris hasn't learned this, uh, but it's when you found the research to support your opinion, you don't necess necessarily have to show your work. You know, like you don't necessarily like I I I want to tell them all the numbers too, 
But also, like, I realized that don't nobody care about the numbers. They care about the opinion, if, if that helps you get it right. But, like, he works his ass off at it, and I respect that. And he can he can run the offense. And I know, like, oftentimes there's somebody on the set that we all are, like, orbiting around. And sometimes when it was Jeff Saturday, sometimes it was him. And sometimes it's me. Sometimes it's RC. Sometimes it's Kimberly Martin. You know, but there are there are people who don't have that ability to run the offense, and those people are fine. But boy, it get, it, you get exhausted. Like Mike is incredible host, but so rarely is Mike gonna run the offense because, like, I guess that's a bad analogy because he he's throwing it around. But so rarely is he gonna be the centerpiece because you kind of need an opinion, you know, to to spin off of. And the more like unique the opinion is, the more like the easier it is for the rest of us to play off of. And when I do back-to-back days of get up Tuesday and Wednesday every week, it sure is nice on Wednesday. Chris Canty bring his big ass in there and say all types of shit. And I'm like, yes, Chris, give it to him. Then I get all mad at him on set. Then I, then I dap him up in the middle of the commercial. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's a good time. He also understands. And a lot of people understand this, but it's something that took me a second to understand is like, we are trying to entertain, not win the argument. And Stephen A taught me that the first time I was on. Yeah, we had this conversation before. Yep. I was trying to win. I was trying to win first take. Like, no, you don't want to. You don't want to beat that person. Like, winning is creating a good segment, not cutting the dude off and not preemptively like undercutting his point. You don't want. You don't want to eight mile him. <laughs> you yeah. want to let him say their thing. Yeah, I know. Sometimes though, sometimes I'm out. For blood, sometimes yeah, yeah. I sometimes victory is imperative. I I agree with like I try to do shows now with people that I could just kick it with, man. Because like one mm-hmm. thing I do realize, especially in the last, I guess it is now a year and change or something like that. Like I don't be engaging in these team sports too much anymore. I'm not even out here playing yeah. tennis. I'm out here hitting the ball against the wall and hitting it again and hitting it again and hitting it again. And then when I get tired of hitting it, I hand my racket to somebody, go get somebody to wipe my face off with a towel. And then I come back around. Right. And then like this, this right here, I'm like, yeah, this is, this is a team I could be y'all, but the yeah. team is a duo. You know yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> like I can't Sorry. do the big team game no more. Cause you're right. You can't come out there to win. And I have a real hard time hearing, uh, hearing nonsense and allowing yeah. it to slide you ain't never really done a, a whole bunch of that like debate tv i guess i'm um, around the horn well, yeah i did like around the version. horn but i mean that's not direct debate but it's a but people say oh, silly oh, shit that you have oh, to call out hold on hold on it can be as direct debate yeah. as you wanted to be baby and yeah. i can't lie i was coming out there on around the horn treating yeah. that like a handicap match <laughs> oh y'all come on Every sick, they didn't know who the hell I was. Like I always say this, and nobody, nobody on the team really hits me back, and it's cool. It's very polite of them. I just can't imagine what they thought of me for the first year and a half. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. I've never heard of this person, and I came in swinging. <laughs> That's the way to do it, though. Did I ever tell you about the time um I got punched in the face my freshman year yes. in college? Box yeah, in the okay. locker room. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I was, uh, for everyone who hasn't heard this story, I'll tell it quickly. I was um, one of the early high, I think Philip Rivers did it the year before me. And then I was like one of the early high school people who did like the second half of the year of your senior year of high school. You just go to college and you start practicing with the football team. So I get there, uh, I'm talking sh- and I openly like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be starting that corner. And so we would have boxing gloves in the locker room. I called my man out. One of the corner, the second best corner on the team at the time. I was like, yeah, I'm going to take his job. But first, I'm going to body him in this boxing match. I'm 153 pounds. Ain't been in no legitimate weight program. But that's all right. I'm full of all this uh, ego. And, you know, you got to come on the yard and, and knock the biggest dude out. It's a problem when that dude knock you out. He rocked me. <laughs> so and he's a he's a sweet guy. He's a sweet guy because he, I mean, he didn't like knock me unconscious, but I was dazed and he stopped because if I was him, oh, this little young dude coming in and talking about who job he going to take and how he bettered. Oh, 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 oh I would be made. Him. Points oh. would be made. Oh my. I mean, he made his point. I stopped talking. <laughs> oh, that's we why became I said, good. That's why yeah. I said points. <laughs> exactly. a, a second point would be made. The first point was you don't want it. The next mm. point is now nah, don't say nothing else to us. Yeah. <laughs> 
he was right. That was a, a lesson learned, but nobody could do that uh, on around the horn, verbally or physically. Now, I think that's actually an interesting question. If there's anybody on around the horn that I absolutely 100% do not want to fight. Like I'm thinking from the beginning around the horn era. I can't, I'm not saying that I could beat everybody up on around the horn, right. just to be clear. I'm just saying, as I go through it, I can't get to the, I actually know. I tell you the guy from my around the horn era that I don't think you want to fight. And I know yeah. this is going to surprise some people. Well, you, you got any guess what I'm thinking about? Uh, I would have said the Iceman, Isola. Oh, yeah, you might not want to fight. That, that, that is a good one. I think of him as a later era, but you are correct. Yeah. The Iceman, son of NYPD cop. Yeah, yeah, you don't want to fight. I don't think you want to fight Frank Isola. Yeah, I don't know. Woody Page comes to mind, but I, I think nah. I body Woody Goofy ass. No, nah, no. Nah. Woody, break Woody, that, Woody, break that Woody, chalkboard. Woody, son, you, I promise you. Fight Michael Smith is not a great idea. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. No, I know that. I yeah. promise you. I, promise I mean, you. all the all the New Orleans conversations that we've had. Yes, yes, that's <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it starts I, there. I it's, would like to apologize publicly to Michael Smith for not thinking of him first of all, <laughs> just in case I run into him or his hairline in the and, streets. And I t and I tell you this too. And hashtag I Y K Y K. I was with my bad Mike one night in a situation where a fight was there a fight i probably would have fled and a fight that michael smith was willing to have and that's why i was like nah you don't want to fight michael smith <laughs> you don't you don't i went to graduate school man my nicest dude i've ever met in my life like legitimately a dude that i look at and i'm like i recognize that 23 years old and he was 25 that as a man i need to be more like this person mm -hmm. you know what i mean like like mm -hmm. in a very substantial significant way the nicest person you'll ever meet. And I promise you, man, if it comes down to it, he's an Ivy League professor now. That heavy-handed motherfucker will beat <laughs> you to sleep. I promise you, it will all go out the window. Gentilly District, yeah. New Orleans, Louisiana, man. I'm just letting you know, if the dude is from, that, look, they may be a punk dude from New Orleans somewhere. Mm -hmm. I ain't met him yet. <laughs> Me neither. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm thinking back of all of them Louisiana guys, New Orleans in particular guys that I, I know pretty much. I'm thinking all of Louisiana, honestly. Yeah, yeah. Like you, what, you don't want it with them. You want to get Odell Beckham with the funny haircuts. You want to give it a try? No, you yeah, don't. Good luck. Good luck. <laughs> and it ain't all it ain't all the talking too. That like some of them are like that. That are like they talk their way into a fight. But the ones that I'm thinking of that I'm sure is the case for most people, the scariest ones are the ones that don't never say nothing, but that you you see in their eyes when the mm -hmm. when the switch was hit and it's turning that switch off is a, is a problem. The ones who don't give a damn about themselves at a certain point, yeah. you done gone too far. Yeah. Your career and out the window, everything. Yeah, I don't want it with them. And New Orleans got something in common with Baltimore in this regard. That lead in that water, man. Like, no, like don't that, do that, that to us. No, and, and they did it to y'all. What are you talking about? Don't do it to y'all. You need to take that up with your local congressman, your landlord, or whoever it was. Like, you remember <laughs> that year when LSU and uh LSU and Miami got in that fight in the tunnel <sighs> at the Peach Bowl, yeah, and yeah. then Miami went out there and got beat to sleep in the game. Mm -hmm. And I remember that when Miami fought Florida International in that game, where Brandon yep. Merriweather was stepping on the dude, and Lamar Thomas had some of the greatest color commentary of all time. And me and my brother watched that. And my brother's big thing about watching it was, hey, man, I ain't breaking up no fight with a bunch of Florida dudes, right? Because that's all that was. Miami versus FIU is, whoo, there's some dudes out there, right? But LSU versus Miami, them Florida dudes is accustomed to being the Florida dudes in the fight. And I don't think they realized that they were running up on a bunch of dudes from Louisiana. And the outcome, apparently, of all steps in the process reflected. Louisiana uh, was a sleeper in the bracket. The, a, a surprisingly tough three seed. <laughs> Marcus Spears falls into the category of the sweetest man you ever want to meet. You don't want it. I promise you, you don't <laughs> want it. I absolutely guarantee you that you don't want it. And he's going to do everything he can do to not give it to you. But if you ask him for it. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh. you're gonna get it, uh. dog. Because he from Baton Rouge, 
And a, and a dude from Baton Rouge is like, what if a dude from New Orleans has something to prove? <laughs> <laughs> Not no. what a New Orleans dude with a chip on his shoulder. <laughs> New Orleans dudes coming up in there acting like they soft. Uh, and no, no, oh, no, man. No, uh, no, no. We don't have a content problem on this show because we don't talk about nothing on this show that has any place on any other show that I do. So Absolutely this is the one not. that doesn't feel point. like work. It doesn't feel like effort. It's <laughs> like, this ain't going to work. Uh, this ain't going to work on Debatable. <laughs> no, we, yeah, no, we can always find the other place to go. Like, yeah. there really aren't that many places where it's like, like the difference between New Orleans and to a degree Miami and all these other places is Memphis is a good example of this. Also, there ain't no way you can be so sheltered that it don't come up, right? Like you can't shelter yourself to the point where you're not going to have to like establish yourself in some form of fashion, just about everywhere else. You can grow up and insert place here, but go to this school or whatever. Don't know about that. Nah, 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 nah. The, the, like the find out part, is there for them boys in a much different way. And, you know, they country in that way where they fight because they bored. Yeah. <laughs> like when the, when the, when the grizzle was getting into it with Shannon Sharp, like Shannon Sharp definitely recognized that Steven Adams is probably not a matchup that he wanted to engage in, but them other two boys, they needed to stay where they were. Shannon Sharp would have beat them to death. One thing about those photos, not even the video, but uh, the photo of Shannon walking away, uh, I thought about tweeting, but I just, I, I stay, I stay off of the social media by and large a lot, but I looked at Shannon's hands and that's, that's, that, that'll tell you a lot about a situation, whether you want it or not. And Shannon's hands told me that y'all gonna have to kill him. <laughs> even you, Steven Adams, maybe Shannon don't want that matchup, <laughs> but you are going to have to to kill that man those men that man got them hands that just get a hold of you you could tell i don't know what it is like i'm not a palm reader maybe i'm a knuckle reader but i could tell that it's something about the way his hands are structured that tell me that there ain't no give up in them dominique that man grew up without indoor plumbing that's all i'm saying like you don't the toughness you don't you know what hey, hey play the music Thank you for your patience. A representative from the right time will be with you shortly. Your current hold time is 15 seconds. Yeah, no, 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 no. Shannon Sharp, I forget what little town it is that he from down there. Hey, he down there from where Clarence Thomas from. I'm not saying mm -hmm. nothing to indicate that Shannon Sharp and Clarence Thomas have the same politics. I'm just telling you, it's that kind of hard living that, that's going on down there in that South Georgia. Yeah, I can't. I can't. I was just imagining <clears throat> the the culture of a person who, and because like you, you're not the only person in your neighborhood who don't got plumbing. You know, so like you are amongst a bunch of other people who yes. don't got no indoor plumbing. Yes. So the culture of that place is is not one that I'm familiar with, nor is it one that I want to get familiar yes. with in any way. It's actually interesting to think about this. Does anything make you tougher than going to the bathroom outdoors for most of your life? Right. Because like there's nothing about that that indicates that you can fight. Right. There's nothing that indicates. But that does tell you. That person, and I guess part of fighting is the willingness to uh, endure a certain level of inconvenience. Yeah. It's, and they are telling you right then and there, like, do you know how much my booty has itched <laughs> at various points in my life? And I couldn't the, really do nothing about it. It's the definition of, of want to. When we say those cliches, <laughs> like they wanted it more and you don't know what they talk about. It don't really mean nothing. You want them to give you some, some hardcore analysis. That's it. That's it. You in a fight with somebody who ain't had no had no indoor plumbing. They want everything more than you. Yes. Yes. No, no, no. Those are problems you don't want. Wow. I guess halfway into this podcast, we got another week to talk about a Super Bowl. You know what I'm saying? So I guess it's like maybe, okay, we, 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 yeah, but we do. I just want to get to this thing about that Super Bowl. We talked about it last week. I talked about it on the TV show. 
and I've been kind of holding on to this. I don't think I really talked that much about it on Monday, but oh well. They keep doubting that boy Mahomes, man. Like, like when I saw somebody say some tweet that was like when the guy say give Mahomes his respect, he's like, yeah, he's so disrespected. He's one of the top. Two. Everybody says he's one of the top two quarterbacks in the league, and I'm like, you don't hear the disrespect? It's right there in front of you. What more does he have to do, guys? <laughs> That's all, man. What more does he have to do? His, I don't know if you talked about this. I don't remember you talking about it, but I would like to talk about on every platform that I can is what Patrick Mahomes Sr., his sideline post-game performance. This. Oh, my gosh. That boy, that man, excuse me. Like, he embodied everything that reminds me of my childhood, like that familiar, <laughs> raspy den of Hennessy and, and Newports. Not that yes. he engages in any of them, but that's what it sounded like. And I loved it. And he said it. And my boy do what he always do. He show up and he show <laughs> out. Like, God, smoking Yo. on that Joe Barrow. Yo, so this is the thing about his pops. Given that, like, his dad was a professional athlete for a very long time. Yeah. And with that distinct name, like if you paid any attention to baseball, it's not like, oh, I remember Patrick, Pat Mahomes, but you remember the name Pat Mahomes, right? Mm -hmm. And so when the next one came up, you immediately knew this is his son, all of this. And I found it to be very interesting that there weren't like more features written about father and son that we had never seen a whole lot of interviews. They don't really be putting them on camera when he's at the games. And there you go. It's right there. That they they this was th this story would be heartwarming to you and I, but apparently oh. not going over in the same way. Like I'm gonna be honest. I don't want to be presumptuous. I ain't trying to get in nobody's anything. None of that stuff. However, I had always operated under a presumption that Patrick Mahomes the second grew up with money, and I see his pops, and it could go either way. Yeah, I do. I do not. Yeah. I like. It, it, and look, if his pops. Kept his money, fantastic. That would be great. Where that? Where that? Because it is nowhere that I can see. No, no, nowhere whatsoever. I bet they be pulling his ass over all the time in his nice car. Oh, you, oh, you rich, huh? Okay. Ooh. I don't know. And I'm with you. Like, I want to be delicate around this because I want to make sure everyone knows that even though I'm laughing, it's from a place of familiarity yes. and love. And it's from a unique place. Like, that's not the dads that you used to see in. <laughs> like, and that's like, I didn't grow up with money, but that's not even my dad. That's the <laughs> uncles that we only got to see on holidays because yes. my mom didn't want us to have too much of that influence. No. You know, like it, it is clear to me in just those couple seconds that he is intimately familiar with the element. And I yes. love it. You know, it, it looked like that, not just the element. Let me tell you who else he is familiar with. Uh, musical artists like, the Otis Ely. Are you familiar with the Otis Ely? What's my man uh, with the of candy course. licker song? Marvin, was it Marvin <laughs> Sass or whatever my man's name is? He know, he know that, he look like he know that liquor house music. <laughs> liquor house music is a very particular strain of the R&B soul oh, genre, gosh. right? Oh, His gosh. pops look like he know about all of that right mm -hmm. there. Every single bit of it. I love it, man. It makes me so We haven't seen much of Jalen Hurts' father, which, like, I appreciate and respect. But, like, I've, I've seen pictures of him, and, like, it just is – it is a version – or both of them, I would say, is, like – it ain't it ain't Archie Manning. That's all, yeah, man. Look, look, and look. I love it. Jalen Hurts' daddy's name is a very odd. I know. Or is it every, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know, know how, how to pronounce it. it. It's just how yeah, it's spelled. I've seen it. I don't never say it out loud, but, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but like, I've read it a number of times. A V E R I O N. And his daddy a football coach. Like I got to tune into game theory uh, Friday night, 11 o'clock, HBO, HBO Max. I got a little discussion on some of these things. But no, the, when, when Pat Mahomes' daddy came out there, he, he looked like he played in an Ike Turner tribute band. <laughs> <laughs> Right, and a couple uh, more gigs, uh, and he can save up for the full like Turner kit, and he can get them veneers. And it, it was like the way he, the way he looked, and then also the voice, man. <laughs> that voice, man. That that voice. Like I closed my eyes, and it took me back, man. It's just yeah. like it sounded like he he worked at a at a like he's a mechanic. And yeah, no, no. Smoking <laughs> on that Joe Burrow. Oh. So I'm going to tell you a, a, a story that will come back around and it will seem circuitous, 
but you'll get where I'm coming from. So I used to coach, it's almost 20 years ago now, I coached a youth league team in Chapel Hill of high schoolers in basketball. And it was a fascinating collection of Caucasian high school students who called themselves the Dutch Masters. Um, their uniforms were yellow with black letters. And so you understand what was going on with the Dutch Masters. My man, Petey Green, who does the intro for this song, for this, for the Evening Jones, for a few other, you know, different projects. That's where I met him. Peter is, well, he's not a kid anymore, but Peter, when I met him, was a kid with dreadlocks down to his ass and line of Judah wristbands on, and he's not posing. Okay. Like he's not fronting. This is like, it's a legit sincere place mm-hmm. that he wound up in. Obviously I love Peter. Cause I'm just 20 years later, still good cool with Peter. Anyway, they're the Dutch masters. Me and my buddy, Aiden, we both young black dudes. We are coaching this team and we come in and it's this black lady who is running the table, like running the scoreboard or something. And she tells us, I'm going to tell you right now, your whole team is high, especially number 24, and number 32. One of which was obviously Petey. And another one was my man Charles, a.k.a. the Big O, who was this tall, goofy, very pale, red-headed young man. And his eyes were as red as his hair. Like, just to be clear, right? Like, yeah, it was definitely yeah. what was going on. And we had to talk with them after the game and just be like, yo, I don't know if y'all got to breeze it up, whatever it is. But, you know, y'all, mm-hmm. y'all, y'all hot right now. Y'all hot right now. So after the game, the woman who was running the thing told us, she was like, yeah, I could tell. She's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, you know, I, I used to smoke that. And she's like, I was like, oh, y'all got that for show killer. And I was <laughs> like, this is like 2003. And I'm like, ain't no use to, ma'am. Like, like that is, the, that yeah. is, that is, those are the words of someone who is a current participant in that culture. Yeah. I say that to say what Pat Mahomes Sr. said, smoking on that Joe Burrow, his get down, came right to the forefront. (laughs) That is not something that people do not say without a level of direct knowledge of (sighs) what the get down is. And here's the thing, though. I guarantee you, what he got to give you a headache. I don't mean that in no good way. Yeah, I know. I assure you. (laughs) Like, that, that man right there does not look like a man that is asking about the terpenes. In his uh, it is what you would call it. All that, uh, all that, all that, all that. Go to the dispensary uh, talk. That nah. he, he doesn't understand why you got to do that when Johnny Ray up the road. I ain't never done him wrong. He take care of you. Oh man, down in Texas too, man. Yeah, dude, not not just in Texas. They up there in Northeast Texas. Like this isn't Texas that's close to Dallas. This isn't yeah. Tex Texas. That's close to Houston. This is really Texas. That's either you close to the base, and I think they close to the base of yeah. Fort Hood and Colleen. But after that, you close to like Oklahoma. Like I think if you in they look where they're from, if you go into the mall, you either go into like Tyler or Waco. Do you see my face? <laughs> Yeah, that that's a, a different type of toughness that yeah. we haven't talked about it here. There's a different Ooh, type of toughness. Oh, the white people mean too. Boy. Yeah, like, that's too. up there. That's up there, not too far from where my mama's people are from. And we took one trip up there that one time, and I was like, "Oh, this is where we came from." Like, keep it in mind, they looked around and said, "We should go to Oklahoma." <laughs> Not California, yeah. you know, like not New York, not Chicago. No, no, no. Oklahoma. That that'll be better than this. Oklahoma is an upgrade is uh is a sentiment that I don't think I ever would have thought of. Yes. Black people like, you know what? Let's get out of here. Let's go to Oklahoma. Texas. That's that's what that <laughs> Texas. Oh that's, man. I mean, think well, think about this, right? Like we talk about we use the word California very broadly. Yeah. When even the two words Southern California are far too broad, but like you think you go into California, that's where people had all them data points. I imagine that when they told a lot of them kids they was going to California, they thought they was going to uh, get some L.A. and they went and got some Oakland. And I love Oakland. I ain't saying nothing wrong with Oakland, but if you thought you was going to L.A. and you got off in Oakland, you would have some questions. A lot of questions. Yeah, I, I still can't get over the idea that moving from anywhere to Oklahoma. Seems like a warmer sun. <laughs> yes, it was. It was. It, it, it was in just about every way. It was That's a depressing. warmer sun. That's depressing. 
<laughs> I'm sorry, Oklahoma. I'm sure there's lots of good things in Oklahoma, good people in Oklahoma. Oh, yeah. But my perception, no one has ever been like, man, I can't wait. Once I get my money together, we going to Oklahoma. Like, that's yeah. never been a sentence dog, said it out loud. It, But, Doc, I don't even think it was get my money together, we going to go to Oklahoma. I think it was we got to go to Oklahoma to get our money together. Yeah. Like, like that was, that was, there's all kinds of stories in the family uh, being up there. Oh, we, we got there because Patrick Mahomes, a country ass daddy, is from there yeah. and they live there. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I tell you this though, I bet that man, I don't know what their house looked like, but let me tell you what I guarantee you they got a lot of land. He yeah. got that, like that country, like country folks in that part, what we big on is we got some land. Mm -hmm. I bet he got whatever it is on a big old plot of land. I hope to see him on the sideline after the Super Bowl. No matter the outcome, I want him to get the post game interview because no matter what, it's gonna be great. And that smoking on that Joe Burrow, like that's <laughs> that's classic. I don't want to ever forget that. That's one of the the highlights of this season to me. I would like <laughs> us to remember that that particular moment smoking on that Joe Burrow. Well, well when's somebody gonna put that Joe Burrow pack out? Because you know somebody oh, you know yeah, somebody been trying to figure out what to put the name on that strain is and that Joe Burrow pack. I mean, that's, got, that's like naming jazz songs, right? Like, how you come up with a name for this? Like, how'd you decide what this was going to be? They gonna put Somebody going to put that name on that Joe Burrow pack, and then they going to see their names on that little C and D sis. <laughs> you know it's already on there, though. They, they already selling that all over Kansas oh, City. I guarantee it. Oh, dog, dog. People doing so much wild stuff. I saw a packaging in New York. Because, you know, New York went legal, right? Mm. And while New York went legal... There are plenty of establishments that are selling it whose existence are not, right? right? And so I went to go peek at one. I was like, I want to see what's going on in here. Dog, somebody was selling the Roberto Clemente pack. And when I say the Roberto Clemente pack, I don't simply mean that it was called Roberto Clemente. I mean, the pack had pictures of Roberto Clemente on them. I think it was a big poppy pack, and it yeah. was pictures of David Ortiz on it. And I'm like, I'm just telling you guys right now, Either A, the Clemente people are about to come holler at you, or B, they are a far more enterprising brood than yeah. one would have expected. That That's blowing my mind. Like I go up to New York every week and have been for a while. It blows my mind how, how legal the people of New York have made it to the point where there, there's a, I mean, you can't go a, you can't go a quarter mile like in the financial district and down by the seaport. You can't. To every two blocks, there's like a smoke shop where they're selling weed out of. They also got, you know, how the guys on the on the street on the side of the street don't have a table set up to sell hats and umbrellas uh, and books or whatever. It's just out with weed, just in plastic bags across the table. And like, I'm not here to judge, but and then the police just drive by, don't say nothing, don't do nothing. Like it's just it's just legal, I guess. Well, it was always wild legal before that. Yeah, like I mean. People on Instagram with accounts for their delivery services, right? Yeah. Like it, you know, you 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 just couldn't just be supremely disrespectful, shall right. we say? But it was always like fairly legal and op op open market. But what I had expected when they changed the laws was that the only way that creating a legalized market works is that you have to beat the unlicensed mm -hmm. vendors over the head. Mm -hmm. But the problem is. You can't really do that because so much of this is about righting the wrongs of the past and you're going to be beating the people over the head that you're not supposed to be, be beating over the head. So once people figured that out, they was just out here. Now, they found all kinds of interesting strategies. Like there's this dude named Uncle Bud. Uncle Bud got some trucks. He got trucks yep. truck set up down the street from my house. He got a truck. Actually, got two trucks set up down the street from my house, just down different streets, right? But the way they got Uncle Bud off the streets was Uncle Bud clearly is illegally parked and they hit uncle bud with all the parking tickets yeah however uncle bud must be making bank because he back and when i say it was parking tickets i mean like tens or like somebody got once got hit with a bill for hundreds of thousands of dollars in parking tickets and paid it <laughs> paid it it's just the cost of doing business baby yeah no no like it's a it's a it's a whole different world. Like when the mayor gets out somewhere, he says something about I forget what he was talking about once. He's like, everywhere I go, I just smell pot. He right. <laughs> he is absolutely right. New York is a 
is yeah it feel like i never been to amsterdam but it feels like what i imagine people tell me amsterdam is like it's just like yeah it's part of life it's woven into the fabric like i told you my mind was blown i don't consider myself like uh, a, a hermit like i get out i see the world but when i saw a man with a fold-out table with just weed wrapped up in like plastic bags <laughs> laid across an assortment with signs on it naming each um strand and he just standing there like he on canal street um selling bootleg purses i just was like oh okay this is where we at i tell you this though the next step of this is the jump out boys and i ain't yeah. talking about the police yeah. i'm talking about people know that you just sitting there with all that cash like you got to have a homie that's ready like that's the thing important they had because there's so much cash is people smashing and grabbing breaking into all these places because they know that they sitting on all this cash because they can't get these bank accounts now somebody's going to learn the hard way that this isn't the way to go but somebody is going to uh try to find out I, i'm a little surprised somebody ain't tried to run up on uncle bud yet but i tell you this i read a magazine profile of uncle bud um you don't want to be on the find out end of that fact finding mission yeah, I assume that somebody did try to run up on Uncle Bud already, just because you ain't heard about it. You are, you, are, you are not in the circles that hear about these sort of things anymore. It's my guess. I, I, yeah, I don't imagine that these wolves did not uh, try to approach that. And I assume <laughs> Uncle Bud let them know that he ain't the one. It's my guess. Yeah, man, I tell you this, Pat, Pat Mahone's daddy come up here like, boy, you ain't never gonna believe what I saw out there. Boy, I went on that dude had truck. Truck. He was shut. I said, "Out that truck, boy. I I ain't never seen nothing like it. It was pretty good too. That last a little too strong for me." Oh man, I love him so much. Yeah, I, that doesn't sound anything like him, but it does sound yeah. like he looks. <laughs> it sounds exactly like he looks. You are you are absolutely right. Yes. But yeah, this this Super Bowl gonna be something, man. Yeah, no, it's gonna be. Can't lose. Uh, I can't lose. I, 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 I view it very similarly. Like, yeah. I want Mahomes to get it just because I'm with him just kind of like, well, how far can we push this? Yeah. Like, you think about this. If they were to go to a sixth straight conference championship game next year, like, this is what the Patriots were doing in the last decade. But there was no point in that last decade. Well, actually, I don't know. Well, no, I would say that. In that last decade, there was no point where they asked Brady to do as much as they're asking him to do right now with that offense because really they ain't got no it's travis kelsey and they ain't got no guys there's no like super great offensive linemen like i would not be surprised if in a couple of years this patrick mahomes in there like hey man i need some help y'all out here taking this for granted the offensive line overall is really good but there you're right there's no like one person on that offensive line that's like uh a, you like a perennial all pro guy well but, i guess they got they got a little zeus right yeah yeah he was i mean he was the second best tackle on the Ravens before they uh, moved on from him because um, Stanley was the mm -hmm. uh, Stanley was the man out there. But yeah, Zeus is incredibly good, but he's not like Trent Williams stat status guy. And there's as a as a unit, that O line is very good. They protect like that was their strategy, which the smart strategy when you have Jordan back there is like we're not going to be fully reliant on any particular playmakers. We're going to protect our man, try to keep our man healthy and keep uh, these people from the other side from getting in his face. And if we can give him time and protection and make him comfortable, ain't nobody he can't beat. And we can put whomever out there on the edges. He going to make them into something. Right. Last thing before we head out on this. Uh, as a defensive back, what you think about your man Trent Williams throwing that dude down like that, man? Them boys got salty, didn't they? Trent Williams, man, that, he he falls into the category. I don't even know where he's from, but uh, he falls I think into he's from the Dallas. Yeah, okay, good enough. That man, you remember he tried to fight? Uh, I'm sure you remember uh, Richard Sherman after the game. Yes. Yeah, Trent Williams, he ain't one. He don't really care. It feels like to me about anything or anybody, and he will follow the rules of the game as long as that it's. As long as he feels that there's a reason to. Yes. <laughs> once there's no longer a reason to, like once the whistle is blown, he'll fight your whole team. Once the game is out of reach, he'll slam you on your neck. Like it, it, he seems like the odd. What happens, I think, a lot with young kids who are huge is their coach, like their aggressiveness is coached out of them. You know, and also because they're so huge, they're so rarely challenged. 
-hmm. And like, I don't mean no disrespect to big guys, but most big guys are like a little bit softer than like the average size guys or the smaller guys, because it's, it requires something different of you to be a smaller guy in life. And particularly in this cutthroat, cutthroat environment of professional athletics, but I don't know what happened to him. Maybe he just was always around big guys, but <laughs> he got uh like a little guy's mentality inside the biggest, most physically imposing, <laughs> strongest. Like I'm sure you saw him do them pull-ups. Mm-hmm. Like <sighs> it's uh, it's just not fair. Yeah, he from that Dallas, that um, uh, I mean that area of Texas, like around Mahomes, you belong view. I just looked it mm-hmm. up. So he from like up around that part. It is wild how one thing or one game that you see can define somebody for you and it takes forever for it to shake mm-hmm. out of your mind because, you know, everybody tell me Trent Williams is a Hall of Fame left tackle. I still have to push out of my mind a game 15 years ago when his last year at Oklahoma where Brian mm-hmm. Arakpo just gave him the blues in the second half of Texas beating Oklahoma. It took good 10, 12 years for me to be like, oh, so Trent Williams is actually good because, I mean, Brian Arakpo, I can put him over there and you go see what see what the Hall of Fame will really look like, I guess. Maybe that was the inciting incident that turned him into the, yes. the menace that he is today because I, I haven't seen that happen to him in the NFL yet. <laughs> Yeah, nah, it just took me a minute. Wow, what a meandering. Me coming up with what to send on the tweet about this podcast is going to be interesting. Good luck to you guys coming up with the description. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, that is Dominique Fosberg. Check him out on Get Up and Skate. First take, debatable. The Dominique Fosberg Show. The Mina Kimes Show. He at you, dog. Appreciate you, man. Anytime, buddy. All right, man. And ladies and gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us here on The Right Time. Remember, hit the voicemail line, 860-516-4119. Tell us your best story, the craziest thing you've seen happen at a Super Bowl party. 860-516-4119. Parker Owens and Ariel Casio handling things behind the scenes. Thank you. Remember, follow the right time. Rate us, review us, give us five stars. You only give us four stars. I'm inclined to believe you are a hater. And we'll talk to you guys in a couple of days. Take it easy. Thanks for checking out The Right Time with Bomani Jones Podcast. You can listen or follow on the ESPN app or wherever you listen to podcasts. The Right Time with Bomani Jones.